Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. I see some bright, shining smiles this morning. That's nice on a rainy day outside. Today, flowers up front have been beautiful. They are in honor of Ken and Roxanne Rowe's wedding anniversary given by Sue Rowe and also, I'm assuming, by Stephen, too. Um, I want to thank Carrie Taylor for being liturgist today. It says Natalie on the bulletin. That's my fault. I'm one week off, so I apologize to Carrie, and Carrie is the liturgist today. So thank you, Carrie, for being our liturgist. I also want to give a special thank you to Cheryl Lotes and to Eileen Taylor for both helping out yesterday. I told them they don't realize that just what an extra help it is to have an extra couple bodies on hand um, for the wedding yesterday. So we had the Bowman and the Groover wedding yesterday. Please make sure, um, I think most of you are aware, but make sure that you have your um, bulletin and purple hymn book and also um, downstairs next to the bulletins Sue wrote nicely wrote up some stuff but it wasn't in time to get it in the weekly news thing or the park view so please make or take copies of those I made copies of them for you to read um, so that's what that one sort of letter type thing looks like down there that's information for you that's that's interesting and important um, so make sure that you gather that. Today, we have Sunday school, if we get little ones, and it's Ann Rogers and Holly um, today, so thank you both. Spring concert is today at 3 o'clock. I know Natalie's been hard at work. She's been <laughs> hard at work with the rummage sale and then hard at work at this. I don't know when she stops. So <laughs> so <laughs> There's also birthday cards um, that she got ready that are down on the table, so if you'd make sure that those get signed today, that would be appreciated. Um, the other thing, this next week, May 7th, there's lots of things to look forward to next Sunday, but we have the bake sale, so come with some money to unleash your sweet tooth next week. You can always buy some stuff and freeze it. Um, there's also Penny Hanson McBride is going to be doing a presentation on conflict style, and this is very interesting because sometimes we're not even on the same plane when we're talking to each other about different things. And so understanding some of these things through the conflict style that she'll be doing is a good thing. Um, the other thing, did I not quite have that right? Sorry. The other thing next week is communion, and we also have the Little Red Wagon collection. We've also started a collection of children's coloring books. We're doing this throughout the whole month of May, and this is going to be part of a summer mission project to children here in the community, the Children's Book Garden. So if you find some sort of cheap um, coloring books of any kind, if you would gather some of those up and bring them in, we'd appreciate it. Um, we're going to hand those out with crayons and books for the children here. Um, during the village market time. And let's see. I also wanted to, Sue Rowe brought to my attention this morning, there is a women's gathering, Presbyterian women's gathering, that's going to be on May 12th. We have another week to announce it too, but that's going to be at Camp Whitman from 9 until 1. And I will be, um, it's called Sewing Hope for All. They have several different things they're going to do over the course of time. There's actual sewing, there's um, making cookies, and there's also planting flowers. And so all of that information, it, I'll put it up on the board downstairs so that you can um, get that. This next week also, I think it was in the news feed, but it is wrong in the bulletin. There is no women's Bible study this week on Wednesday, so it will resume the following Wednesday, so that's the 10th. So no PW study on 3rd. We also, Sue, did a wonderful job at asking for a deacon, the need for a deacon, so I hope that you've been considering that in prayer, and if you know of anyone, or um, she did a wonderful job last week, so I just hope that that's been working on people's hearts, and if you know of anybody that might be willing to help fill in for that need um, for an extra deacon. And yes? It would be just till the end of the year, I think. Okay, so. At least until we could get a regular nominating committee in place and get that going again, so. Okay. 
Okay, and children's book garden signups will be coming towards the middle of May. So to help out, there's only five times that we're doing this during the course of the summer on Thursdays. So we're hoping to get some people to sign up for hours at a time, just an hour at a time, um, on some of those village market days when we can hand out books to children and the coloring books and the crayons and be there as a presence in the community. So any further announcements that I've forgotten? Natalie? Just one quick correction uh, with the information that Sue put out about um, Beth Friend. It's friend, not Ben. Just so everybody knows, because you probably, if you knew her, you would know it was Beth Friend, but those that didn't, just so you know, it's Beth Friend. Did I type it wrong in the bullet? I think the R was left off. Okay. <laughs> I'll make sure that it gets back on, sorry. I think it was at one point, but um, that doesn't mean it doesn't, things don't get changed once in a while between things. Okay, anything else? Okay. If not, let us join together we are here to worship God. Let us open our hearts and our minds to that worship and leave behind what is outside, come together as a community, worship together, and give glory to God. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Sing to God. Tell of God's wonderful works. Remember all the things God has done. We glory in God's holy name. See the Lord, our strength and refuge. We come to be in God's presence. Let us pray. Son of God, you walk on the waters of turmoil to meet us in the midst of your purpose journey for our lives. Help us to recognize your presence, remember your promise, rely on your power, and receive your peace through every storm. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is 463.
We come seeking God's voice, a voice that loves us, cares for us, but also challenges us to do better, to love more fully and believe more wholeheartedly. Let us be honest with God about where we are on our journey. If you would pray the prayer of confession with me. Lord, we long to draw close to you, but we are afraid. We are afraid to heed your summons, for we do not know what awaits us when we step out in faith. We are wary of taking risks for your sake because the forces of chaos seem stronger than your assurances to us. We worry that we will not have enough faith in you or in the gifts you've given us to do the things you ask. Forgive us, Lord, and save us. Reach out your hand and lift us from our fear that we might follow you faithfully. And let us say, Amen. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. There are no prerequisites, no disqualifications, and no exceptions. We are saved. We are forgiven. We are freed. Alleluia. God has received us, pardoned us, and loved us. So let us forgive each other in love and share the peace of Christ. Peace be with all of you. And also with you. Would you turn to one another and extend those signs of peace to one another? God of our present trouble and promised triumph, open our eyes to see you in the midst of our struggles. Open our ears to hear your words of invitation and assurance. Open our minds to recall your wonderful works and miracles. Open our hearts to glory in your name and seek strength in your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Psalm 105 verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 22. It's entitled, God's Faithfulness to Israel. O oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. 
when he summoned famine against the land and cut off every supply of bread. He had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who had been sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters, his neck was put in a collar of iron, until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him lord of his house and the ruler of his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Our second reading is from Romans, verse, chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart leading to righteousness and one confesses with the mouth leading to salvation. The scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And our last reading is Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33, entitled Jesus Walks on the Water. Immediately he made the disciples get into a boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him by saying to him, You of little faith, why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us all say, Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I may not have any little ones. I'm going to borrow your stand if it's okay for a second. <laughs> I don't think I didn't miss anybody coming in, did I? No. Nope. <laughs> So you're going to be the little ones today. How do you like that? <laughs> well, I was going to try and just do my thing as the, the former music teacher here, so if I can remember the melody now. So this song is put together. It tells a story, and so I was going to have the kids try and put some motions to it and stuff, but the first part, once I sing it, repeats twice, and then the, the second two times you just put in out on the deep blue sea. So you can kind of hum along and try the words out, but it's going to retell the story that you heard Carrie read today a little bit, okay? So first of all, we have to pretend that we're the apostles and we're going to get in the boat, okay? So all the apostles were in the boat, were, sorry, all the apostles were in the sailboat, all the apostles were in the sailboat, all the apostles were in the sailboat, out on the big blue sea. The waves, so we're going to pretend that we have these big waves, okay? The waves rose high and tossed the sailboat. The waves rose high and tossed the sailboat. The waves rose high and tossed the sailboat out on the deep blue sea. Then along comes Jesus walking on the water. So however, however you want to do that, like you're light and on the water, okay? Along came Jesus walking on the water. Along came Jesus walking on the water. Along came Jesus walking on the water out on the deep blue sea. Now we're afraid. The apostles thought that Jesus was a ghost. 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 And they cried out in fear. And they cried out in fear. Now it says, be of good cheer. So I don't know how you want to do cheer, but you know, be of good cheer. It is, I don't be afraid. And then Jesus spoke to them. So, be of good cheer, it is I, don't be afraid. Be of good cheer, it is I, don't be afraid. Be of good cheer, it is I, don't be afraid. Jesus spoke to them. Now, Peter starts walking on the water. So however, however you want Peter to start walking on the water, but you know what happened. Then he starts to sink right okay so however you want to do that so peter started walking on the water peter started walking on the water peter started walking on the water then he started to sink and finally jesus reaching out his hand jesus helped peter get back in the boat and finally why did you lose faith? A question at the end. Ready? Jesus helped Peter get back in the boat. Jesus helped Peter get back in the boat. Jesus helped Peter get back in the boat. Why did you lose faith? So I was going to end with the students, and I will end with you today. Even when we're afraid and we lose faith, I want you to notice what Jesus did. Jesus reached out his hand. Even though Peter didn't quite make it, Jesus reaches out his hand to save us. So we don't need to be afraid. Jesus is always with us. We just need to pray and ask for help. So let us pray and ask for help. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you thank you for loving us, for loving us even, when even when we do some stupid things. We, do some stupid things. we, appreciate, we appreciate you saving us. You saving us. Amen.
Okay. You may have to reposition that a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> it's a little easier to have my hands free with the stamp. So. so we're doing something a little bit different today. So you want to keep your eyes on the screen. We're going to try something. Why do we doubt? Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? In February, there was a terrible earthquake in Turkey near the border of Syria. It was heartbreaking to see the destruction caused by the earthquake and its aftershocks. It was tragic to hear of the immense loss of life, the heartache that this natural destruction caused. Storms of many kinds bring adversity to our lives. I remembered an Upper Room article from back in December that talked about adversity. A pastor writing from Brazil had named a time when his city faced the biggest flood in its history. Our lives are filled with adversity. Adversity comes in many different forms. Adversity is another word for difficulties. From time to time we all face adversity. We all have difficulties. This is a fact of life. The point that the Upper Room article was making was that when adversity comes, we are faced with a choice. Will we trust to God or won't we? It boils down to faith. Marcio, the pastor, says, and I quote, in moments like this, we become plagued by frustration, anguish, and discouragement. We all live through difficult moments, and in such times, dejection often tries to settle in our hearts. But the Word of God meets us in adversity and strengthens us. In his thought for the day, Marcio writes, I will face adversity with faith and perseverance, trusting that God will help me through. To combat, or combat adversity, Marcio names faith. As I considered adversity, I thought of this story of the storm from Matthew. Jesus' disciples were facing adversity. They were out on that Sea of Galilee, and a bad storm came up. This is not unusual on the Sea of Galilee. It's like a bowl of water with cliffs on one side. And when the wind starts, it isn't long before powerful waves start washing over the sides of the boat. The disciples are scared, and rightly so. Storms like this happen in our own lives. It can happen fast when we least expect it. It can happen because of a natural disaster, like the earthquake in February in Turkey and Syria. It can happen like it did when COVID-19 first struck in 2020. It can happen with forest fires, with flooding, with drought. It can happen when war is forced upon us. It can happen when someone we love suddenly dies. It can happen when we lose our health or when we lose our ability to take care of our own needs. It can happen when we can no longer remain in our own homes, when we need extra medical care. It can happen when we have given up our ability to live in our own homes or apartments. Adversity strikes in many different forms. What is the same is the choice that we make. Do we continue to trust in God to have faith or don't we?
I took a closer look at one verse from the story of the storm. And Matthew 14, 31 says, Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught Peter, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Three words caught my attention. First, the writer's use of the word immediately. Jesus didn't wait in the face of Peter's adversity. Peter had attempted to walk on water to get to Jesus. He hesitated, and in hesitating, he became afraid and started to sink. The word immediately says it all, and Jesus' response was immediate. He wasn't angry with Peter or didn't wait for Peter to apologize, nor did he want Peter to suffer. Jesus reached out immediately. This does not mean that Peter did not get wet. It means that Jesus was there with Peter in the middle of the storm. Peter was not alone. Yes, Peter was facing adversity based on his own circumstances, but Jesus was there. If Jesus was there with Peter, Jesus is with us in the midst of our own adverse circumstances. The second word that caught my attention was faith. The Greek word translated little faith describes someone whose faith has become dull or less intense because they aren't listening to Jesus' voice. It is also associated with failing to hear Jesus' voice, to do what Jesus has asked. When someone asks us to do something, we have a choice. Do we do what they request or not? Peter wavered. He hesitated. And that hesitation caused adversity. But Jesus was there immediately to reach out a hand and to help Peter. Peter could have refused Jesus' hand. Instead, he chose. He made a decision to accept Jesus' help. Remember, the storm was still going on when Peter stepped outside the boat. The storm was still going on when Peter accepted Jesus' help. In the process, Peter's faith grew. This is often what happens in the face of adversity. If we accept Jesus' help, if we trust in God to get us through the storm, our faith grows. The Greek word from which little faith comes from is actually two words. Oligos, which means little in number, and pistis, which means faith. Peter's little in number faith grew that day exponentially in the middle of the Sea of Galilee because he made a choice to trust Jesus. The third word that caught my attention was the word doubt. How does doubt fit into this story of the storm and Peter's failing to make it to Jesus on the water? The Greek word translated doubt is distazo, and distazo means to waver. Figuratively, it means to be uncertain. We are at a crossroads, and we need to make a decision to choose one way or the other. When I reread this story from Matthew, I don't think that Jesus was chastising Peter. Jesus was asking Peter why he was uncertain. It has to do with trust. As always, this was a teaching moment, a time to strengthen the disciples' faith. Peter's faith is strengthened during this time of adversity, as was the faith of the other disciples. One other thing I noticed as I looked more closely at the story, the wind didn't die down until Jesus climbed into the boat. During the time that Peter was to walk to Jesus, the sea was still stormy and the waves crashing high. When Peter was sinking in the water, he was in the middle of adverse conditions. Jesus was with him and didn't leave Peter alone. If Jesus didn't leave Peter, Jesus won't leave us. You can trust Jesus in the middle of the storm. We can trust Jesus to be with us no matter what and look for the ways that Jesus reaches out to us immediately in the middle of these storms. 
The reading from Psalms reminds us of God's faithfulness in all circumstances. It references the story of Joseph sold into slavery by his brothers. Yet even then, God was at work using this to ultimately provide for these very same bro brothers and their families. Yes, Joseph went through adversity, but even he says, God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. Joseph could have retaliated against his brothers and kept food for them. At the crossroads, Joseph made a decision to forgive and in so doing, to trust God. Joseph's faith grew that day as he experienced God's ultimate desire for reconciliation and redemption. Our reading from Romans deals with salvation and both stresses and affirms that salvation is for all. It is our job to get this word out. As Romans says, the word is in our mouths and in our hearts. Yes, our lives have adversity, but that is not the last word. The last word is that we have Jesus who promises to be with us no matter what. Called upon to trust, we hope in the Lord and refuse to let adversity be the last word. This is the good news, the hope that we bring to others as we proclaim how Christ has brought us through the many storms of our lives. As Romans says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. We're gonna end and this sort of sums up some things. our hope in life and death Christ alone Christ alone what is our only confidence that our souls to him belong who holds our days within his hand what comes apart from his grace to the end, the love of Christ in which we stand. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal, oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we
That was sort of our prayer, so we're going to move on today and sing ourselves in response to God's word, hymn. And it may sing a little song, sing a little strange that it's, oh, sing a song of Bethlehem. But you'll notice that the verses move from the birth to the death and beyond. So, 159, oh, sing a song of Bethlehem. I had an additional prayer given to me today. Jerry Silawa, Sil- did I say that? Silawa. Okay, got to get the accent right there. <laughs> Jerry Silawa has been placed on comfort care at the Wayne County Nursing Home. Um, so prayers for Jerry and his family. Are there any others? Michael, were there any from online? Let us pray together as God's people. Creator God, you created the world and everything in it and called it good. We look around us and we see your beauty and what you've created in the waters, in the earth, in the sky. Our hearts warm on these days when the sun shines. 
We smile with the birth that spring brings, with flowers and leaves and the songs of the birds. Yet we sin. We taint your earth and barely take time to give it a second thought. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to show, show more respect, not just for each other, but for this world upon which and in which we live. We pray asking that you help us to be better stewards of this land upon which we live and which we share with our fellow human beings. Redeeming God, we want to trust you. It just seems hard with everything that's happening. In the world at large, in our home country, and also in our communities, and the community here in Newark, it seems like we move forward only to find ourselves going backward. We have many storms in our world, natural and man-made. Lord God, we pray for those countries and citizens experiencing the terror of war, and pray for your peace. We ask for prayers for our world and its leaders. We ask for prayers for our country and its leaders. May they seek the welfare of humankind instead of human pride. We pray for those who have lost all that they have to nature, whether from wind, fire, earthquake, or water. Sustain them as only you can. Reach out your hand and bring those resources they need in this time of strife. Sustaining God, we ask prayers for your church. We are definitely in a time of change. We understand that change doesn't need to be bad, but that doesn't mean that it isn't hard and doesn't require courage. May we, your church, listen to you and do your will, not seek to perpetuate what always has been, but to join in the creative and transforming power that is your spirit at work here and now in this vast world that we call home. Guide this church here and now in your intended ministry. Merciful God, we pray for those within and without our congregation in need of your healing, strength, and courage, and in need of wholeness. And we continue to left, lift up Bethany Camella and Mark Booth, Deb Comfer and Marion Maxwell, Shannon and Joe, Kay Groover and Lori Hattendorf, Kay Gray, Donna Merrill and Scott Blondell, Kay Oosterling and Aaron, Dom and James, Glenn and Todd, Richard and William, Douglas and Christine, Wanda Gallagher, Lisa Tremitty, Shirley May, Sandy Rood, Becky Durr, David and Steve, Linda Laurie, Barb, Alice Crespo and Deanna Side, Janine Dutcher and Caitlin Tracy, Kathy Brunessel and Lisa Barrett's son and family, David Wilk and Bev Owen, Nancy Tarantelli and Jean Salisbury, Jan Smith and Allison's, or Allison's daughter, sorry, Jan Smith, Allison's daughter, Kay and Dale Groover, Tim and Hazel, Thelma and Barb, Bonnie and Thurlow, Ed and Cheryl, Barbara Bruner, Eileen Berm, and Jim and Ann Peck, Evan Lang, John, Doug McCrossin, Tom Brady, and Family Promise families, and we also continue to hold Jerry, now who has been placed in comfort care. We pray for his for your peace being extended to him in this time, may he feel your presence as you reach out your hand to him and to his family. God of mercy, comfort those who have recently lost loved ones. We continue to pray for the friends and the families of Sandra White and Nelson Gulvin, Carol Wilson and Danielle Watson, Vaughn Baker and Richard DeBolder, Trudy Hicks, the family and friends of Dr. Joseph Peter Harris, and Betty Chapel. On this fourth Sunday after Easter, may we remain your Easter people, grounded in the good news and forever grateful for your love. To that end, we pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to respond to God's word through our offerings. Because God cares for all without distinction in his friends, This handle and I have an issue. <laughs> Sorry about that. Because God cares for all without distinction and is generous to all beyond measure, so we, God's people, are to care for all with generosity and gladness. We bring our offering to be used for God's good purposes in the church and in the world. If you would stand as you are able. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for your sustaining presence and abundant grace. Receive now these gifts we bring to you out of your generous provision in our lives. May they be used to satisfy the hungry in famine, relieve the oppressed in time of trouble, and proclaim everywhere the good news of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, 353.
I avoided it that time. <laughs> Step out in faith, trusting that the God who has called you is able to keep you from falling and holds you in love. love and faithfulness of God surround you. The peace of Christ enfold you, and the Holy Spirit encourage you now and forever. And let us all say, Amen. Amen.